Hello and welcome to my latest blog. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, the wedding of Matt and Sarah. Before we do anything though, um, I need to go grab myself a cup of coffee. You guys can wait for a second. <laughs> Oh man, that's good. That's a nice cup of coffee. Oh, I need to change the, the, the settings on this camera. So Matt and Sarah first got in touch with me back in it's earlier this year. It was probably around March, uh, February time. They were recommended to me by a friend of mine, Rosie Kelly, who I've, she's a photographer who I've worked with a few times before. Um, she's really great at what she does. If you haven't already, check out her work. You can find her on Facebook or just go on her website really great at what she does and she's been really good to me the past year just kind of like recommending me to her clients and I've got a lot of weddings because of that so thank you Rosie. So back when Matt and Sarah were booking me I my package was a little bit different so they chose something called the personal package and uh, the idea of the personal package was to kind of create a bit more of a um, unique film to the couple. Uh, I wanted to sort of approach the film in a way that like I would do if I was telling like an actual, if I was making like a short film, if I was actually telling a story. Still, I had to think more creatively when coming into this one, how I could tell uh, Matt and Sarah's story in a different kind of way. And I thought, okay, I normally go for like kind of a smooth, um, steady feel, uh, sorry, look to my shots, but instead there's a lot of handheld shooting in there. And normally I'm not one for this but for me I feel like it's something I'm going to be doing more of going forwards with my wedding films because I feel like the, the handheld really worked in this case it gave it a more real feel it made you feel like you're actually there with them so yeah definitely want to try keep trying that again with this film like my previous one at the West Mill with Charlotte and Jacob um, and this is something I really really love doing now it's actually interviewing the couple together towards the end of the day or midway through the day because it gives them a chance to kind of reflect on um, everything that's happened uh, because it can be quite busy. Uh, weddings, you get a lot, there's a lot going on. You don't always have time to just sort of sit down and, and breathe. So it's nice to kind of um, have that chance just to reflect on, on what your favorite bits of the day have been. Uh, and it also just kind of adds a little personal touch to the film, having you kind of think about and go through what had happened and what your favorite moment had been. And I can just like sort of overlay that over the top of the film, it looks, it looks cool, it works really well. Don't get too worried or worked up about the interview aspect of my wedding films. Not everyone's gonna be comfortable in front of the camera and that's, that's, that's fine. However, having that kind of like, having those mistakes, those errors in what you say or kind of like repeating yourself is what makes it feel more natural and real. It's, it, you know, it comes across as more genuine then. So that kind of thing is good. I want you to be like that. I want you to laugh, I want you to giggle, how nervous you are, that kind of thing. When it comes across well, it really works. I had to have a black coffee as opposed to a milky coffee because we're out of milk. I didn't get any this morning, so it's my own fault. So this was my last wedding of the year, but it was also my first time using my brand new C100 Mark II. I'd been waiting like all year just to get a new camera. I was, I, I loved DSLRs, but I was just kind of sick of using a DSLR for video. I wanted to look more legit. I wanted something that produces a nicer image. I wanted something to just be more suitable for filming and the C100 is that. It's the ultimate run and gun camera in, in my view. And the beautiful thing about it is it's just so, even though it's, it's bigger than my DSLR, it's, in terms of a video camera, it's not that big. But the low light performance on this is amazing. Like I can go up to, so on my old camera, I used to go to about 3200 ISO, 6400 max, but it'd be very grainy. and I wouldn't really want to do that. It's only if I had to. But with the C100, I could go to about 20,000 and still be happy with the image. That's incredible. Compared to like what I was using before, that's like a lifesaver. It means I can use my 24 to 70 on not that great of an f-stop. So it only goes to f4, which isn't great for low light. But because I can push that ISO more, I can use that a wider perspective of the first dance. What happens when you use a wider lens and you're dancing with people is it makes you feel like you're more in the moment. And that's what I want. I want people to feel like they're there dancing with everyone. Actually, think, talking about the dancing, um, I just wanted to add why I shoot handheld. Um, I find when you shoot handheld and you're dancing with people, even though it's a bit of shake, you don't really notice it because the movement is so crazy and all over the place. What else about this wedding? Um, it's going a bit cold. 
Oh yeah, um, and also fireworks happened, which was was not part of the plan. It never, it's never, <laughs> nothing is part of the plan at a wedding. But um, I shot Matt and Sarah's wedding on the fifth of November. I managed to get fireworks. I thought this is gonna be awesome. What a cool way to open open up the film with fireworks going off, titles coming on the screen. It, it honestly looked great. Like having that as an intro, it felt romantic. And not only that, we had. We had sparklers arranged because Matt and Sarah weren't really bothered about the idea of a confetti tunnel. We still did a kind of mock confetti tunnel without the confetti, <laughs> but it still works. It's just kind of a nice sort of like moment when they come out of the uh, building, but there's no confetti. So that was what we were going to do. We were going to have like a sparkler tunnel instead. And I was, when I heard they were doing this, I was so excited because I love sparklers. I love how it looks with slow motion. And what I was even more excited about was just testing the, the sort of low light capabilities with the C100 and seeing how well it would handle uh, that kind of situation. And it, and it looked great, like it really, it, looked, it worked really well. As soon as I captured the sparkler tunnel, I knew that was gonna be my intro. I knew that's the way I wanna open it. That's how I want to introduce Matt and Sarah. I like to start with a little prologue with my films, um, never just to start with the preparations. So I find like, just because you're shooting it chronologically on the day doesn't mean you have to edit it chronologically. To make, I like to mix it up, um, play around with the structure a little bit. So in this case, I started with the sparkler tunnel, which was incredible, having like everyone waving sparklers around and Matt and Sarah walking through and just sort of smi smiling, all that kind of laughter surrounding them. I think having something similar to that as your, as your intro sort of draws you in more as a viewer. You're, you're kind of like, oh, that's, that's romantic, that's exciting. I want to watch more now, so it kind of lures you in a bit, and it's just more interesting starting with with some makeup being done or applied. <laughs> oh, another thing I tried, I wanted to see how it would sound, how it would feel if I kept the audio from the camera files from the clips um, attached to them on the timeline, and then had music underneath. Because usually I just put music um, on top of the uh, actual edit, and it just it looks good, it looks fine, but it feels a bit more too much like a music video. So I kept the sound in this time and for me it works incredibly well because you, it builds atmosphere. I um, kept the sound in of people cheering and chanting and like a bit of fireworks in the background like bang 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 and it just kind of, what it does it creates a wonderful atmosphere and makes you as a viewer feel like you're more there in the moment. Do you like my mug? I think for me, um, despite how much effort I put into the visuals, um, how much time I put into the edit. Um, any wedding film I do is never going to work as well as the ones where the couples are as genuine and as passionate and as just nice as Matt and Sarah were. It's personally one of my favourites I've done this year, partly because I got to use my new camera and I was proper excited about that, but also they just make such a great couple, like they just work so well on screen. They were so, I could tell like Sarah was a little bit shy about being on camera, uh, especially when we did the interview but it, it, it comes across really genuine and that's what I love. That's what I want to keep capturing. That's what I want to do. I want to capture like genuine moments, real moments. One final thing to note, um, the grading on this film. I think also a big part of the reason my films look the way they do um, is because of the grade. Now I've got the C100, I think the quality is much higher, but I don't think the look and feel of my films are going to look much different because my style is still intact. My style is still the same. Um, still grading the same way. There's a slight, there's slight difference. Overall, you're gonna just think, it doesn't look much different. But for me, as a filmmaker, it made more sense to my style of shooting. But yeah, let's have a look, at, let's have a look. I'll show you the process of how I grade, actually. Before I do anything, like before I do any grading of any kind to this project, I need to make sure I'm happy with how it looks. So I gotta make sure all the clips are in places, there's no errors, there's no mistakes. It all just flows the way I want it to be. Um, it cuts at the time I want it to be. To cut and once I'm happy with it what I do is apply adjustment layer all over the top of my um, timeline so it covers all of the clips on the timeline and then I grade the adjustment layer and what that does is grade the clip above it and then once I'm happy with the grade once I've adjusted the blacks the contrast the saturation I always turn the saturation to like 120 uh, I like color the when you shoot like on a picture profile like catalog it's quite a flat image, so you need to add a lot more color back into that picture. Once I've done that though, I go to the first clip in the timeline, I color it to however I need it to look. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I will then move on to the next clip. Chances are, 
the clip next to it won't look as good as the one before it because you colored it for that specific clip. So you need to make some tiny, just some minor adjustments. <laughs> but overall, that's how I do. I just go along and repeat that process throughout the whole timeline until I'm happy with everything. You might think, oh, that's, that must take forever, like, but it's worth it. The end look is worth it. So that's it, Matt and Sarah's wedding film. Um, if you haven't watched it already, make sure you give it a watch. The highlights is available online. If you've got any ideas about what else I could blog about, just drop me a comment below um, or message me. Just, I'm up, I'm up for anything. Like I'd like to try something different other than just the wedding film, so. Mm. That's extremely cold now. <laughs>